Well, welcome back. We're in session 49. We're glad that you're back with us as well as the students in the classroom. This session is going to be about where do you serve? Over the past few sessions, we've been looking at what is your spiritual gift? And then we looked at whom do you serve? And now we're looking at where do you serve? I mentioned that a spiritual gift does not tell you where you should serve. It tells you what do you do when you're serving. It is the audience that God has put in your heart as a desire of the heart that points the way to where you should serve. And the audience can either be a group of people or it can be a social institution. Well, in this session, we're going to take a look at the audiences you chose, and based on those audiences, where is the most likely place where you will find those audiences at your church? That's where you serve. You know what the desire is of your heart? Then you know, I have to go and find where it's the group of people likely to be, or which ministry focuses on the social issue that I have an interest in. If our church doesn't have that, perhaps I go outside into the community and find a group there that focuses on it. Or perhaps I encourage an apostle to start a new ministry that focuses on that issue. All right, I am going to once again take you through an exercise. And in this activity, I'm going to read the names of some likely ministries and churches. We have churches from small to medium to large to what they call mega churches who are watching this broadcast. And so not all churches will have all of these ministries. But that's all right. If you have a desire to help the people who are associated with this ministry or to help improve the situation of the social issue through a ministry, then perhaps you're going to start one or perhaps you're going to find one in your local community. The first one is 12-step groups. These are groups for people who are suffering from addictions, alcoholism, uh, overeating, compulsive overeating, uh, sexual addictions. These are all types of things that just destroy lives. 12-step groups are groups that take people through a very prescribed program of 12 steps so that they can overcome uh, their addiction. They never completely overcome it. They just learn how to keep it from coming back. They call it being sober, sobriety. Second one might be buildings and grounds. You might like to help take care of the church. You know, do some painting jobs around the church. Maybe you have some technical skills on electricity or plumbing. Maybe you're handy and you can do some carpentry work. Maybe you just like to go outside and plant some flowers to make it look nice. That would be a ministry. Another one might be a bookstore or a church library where people can go and buy uh, the latest books that have been written by Christian authors. They can buy CDs of uh, musicians who play contemporary Christian music or who play the worship uh, songs that are classic. Perhaps you can't find a ministry in your church. And so you might want to look outside your church. For example, I serve twice a month at a soup kitchen at a place where the homeless come to get a meal. Before they go back out into the cold night, they come and get a warm meal. And our church doesn't have a ministry. So I go to another Christian organization to help them out. You may have to do the same thing. Maybe you'd like to be part of the choir. Uh, you're a good singer, and this is something that you would enjoy doing. And almost every church has some sort of a choir or they have some sort of vocalist who participate in the worship time. Or you may play a musical instrument. Perhaps you play the organ or you play the piano, play the guitar. Depending on the type of worship that you have in your church, 
Maybe that's an area you could find and, and plug into. Some people have specialized skills in the graphic arts. They're good at designing things, posters, banners, uh, announcement sheets, church bulletins. Maybe this is an area that you could plug in and help them. Or in that same area, you may have some training in computers, information technology, and you could help both set up a network, make sure the network is maintained, improve the network, make sure the computers are repaired. See, there's all kinds of needs in the body of Christ. Maybe you enjoy performing and you've been a part of theater before and your church may use drama to communicate the gospel. And if not, almost every church has special events where they put on plays, such as Christmas time. This might be an area that you would enjoy. How about finance, money? Maybe you're really good at accounting or you're really good at investing money or you have a heart to help people who don't have enough money, to give them some money in order to get by. Finance benevolence would be a ministry for you. I already mentioned soup kitchen. A lot of churches though have what's called a food pantry. That is people contribute canned foods and then those people who don't have enough food, they come and they're able to get food that people have donated. And again, if your church doesn't have these ministries, but this appeals to you, perhaps your church could start one of these ministries. It may be that you enjoy cooking. You enjoy making meals. And that often churches have dinners. I mean, they have people who come together and uh, they celebrate some special event. They enjoy fellowship together. Or some churches have a special food service program where after the service people go and they sit around tables and just relax and talk to each other. It may be that you would want to work with those who have lost a loved one in grief support and you would like to help them recover from their loss and get back to a normal life. You might like high schoolers. Almost every church has a high school ministry. Sometimes it's combined with the junior high ministry and sometimes there are separate ministries. But if one of the groups that was your audience was teenagers, this would be a good match. How about junior high ministry? It might not just be the high schoolers. See, for me, high schoolers were not a group that I felt drawn to, but I loved the junior high middle school kids. There was something about them that drew me to them because they're just a little crazy. They're still children, but they're kind of trying to be adults. I loved it. Marriage enrichment. If you're married and you have a good marriage and you want other people to have a good marriage, this might be a ministry for you. Or perhaps your church has a marriage mentoring program where a couple comes together with uh, two people planning to get married and they mentor them along the way on what marriage is going to be like, what some of the problems are that they might anticipate, what some suggestions are on how to communicate with each other. It might be that you have a heart for people overseas and you want to be a part of your missions committee or start one or you yourself might want to go to another country, not as a missionary forever, on a short-term basis. I have been able to go to a number of countries for sometimes a week. I've gone for two weeks. I've gone for four weeks. And I've gone on a trip that lasted six weeks. And I have always enjoyed being in other countries and meeting other people, experiencing new cultures and ministering to those who are Christians, sharing the gospel with those who are not. Maybe it's you just have the gift of helps and you'd be glad to go in and help your church office with the different tasks that they have to do. 
clerical tasks that then would free up the other staff to do their ministry. Or you have the gift of intercession. Almost every church has a prayer team. And they get together and they accept prayer requests from the congregation. And they not only pray at that meeting, they pray throughout the week. And they're prayer warriors. If you have that gift, consider the prayer ministry. Or maybe you have technical skills in the area of sound, lighting, video. And you could be part of your church's production team. Even if you have a very formal service, you use microphones, you have lighting, you have a sound system, and perhaps you could help ensure that those things are set up properly. And then there are other churches that are far less formal who use a lot of drama, contemporary music, and multimedia. They are definitely in need of people who have these specialized skills. Maybe you'd just be able to stay after an event and take down the tables and the chairs. Or come early and put those tables and chairs up. If you have the gift of helps, this is a possibility for you. Sometimes that's just done at random. You know, people show up early and help us set up the chairs. It's much better to have a team of people who have the gift of helps, who are willing to do this on an ongoing basis. Does your church have a singles ministry? Was one of the groups of people that was your audience singles? This would be a ministry for you. How about being a small group leader and leading men in a Bible study? For the women, leading women in a Bible study or a mixed group? And a mixed group could also be singles and married couples or those groups separately. If you have the gift of shepherding, this is a perfect place for you to plug in. It also is good if you have the gift of teaching, but be sure you have a strong shepherd in the group because most teachers are not good at making contact during the week to check on the spiritual status of the people in the group. That's what shepherds do. Maybe you're an athlete. You love sports. And you could start a sports ministry in your church where it could be an evangelistic tool for your friends and your neighbors, for the children in the neighborhood. And sometimes sports is a means of drawing people into the church where they can hear the gospel. Some churches are very large and they have what's called the traffic team because much like in some of our major cities, there are traffic jams long lines of traffic that can't move anywhere. And that happens at very large churches and they have people outside in good weather and bad weather directing traffic, telling people here are some parking spots. That might be for those with the gift of helps. So would being an usher and so would being a greeter. These are all ministries that are perfectly suited to people with the gift of helps. Some churches have vacation Bible school. School's out and the children get together and they have a week where they go through a program where they learn Bible stories and they do crafts and they play games and they hear about Jesus. Or you might have the program called Awana, which is a program that runs year-round, very structured, uh, and the children learn to memorize Bible passages and they are able to then have a firm foundation for their faith in the future. You know, a lot of churches just have one point where anybody who has a question, you go to that booth and you ask, where's the washroom? Where's the toilet? And the person says, oh, right down here. Or they say, I was thinking about joining a small group. And they go, oh, I know exactly who I can put you in touch with. We call it a welcome center or an information booth. If you're a person who has a uh, type of outgoing personality, this is a great place for you to serve. You might want to serve with young adults, 20-somethings, and you might very well be in that age. But whatever your gift is there, you could serve in that ministry. You also might have a ministry called visitation. People are sick and you go and you bring them a meal. 
people are hurt and they're in the hospital and you go visit them. If you have the gift of mercy, this is often a place where you might fit in. And then we have home visitation where home visitation is for those who aren't in the hospital but are suffering of one of two things. One, some sort of physical ailment and they can't come to church or those who aren't going to church because they're going through a very difficult time. They're thinking of leaving the church. Gift of encouragement. That would be the place to be. You see, God has embedded in your heart this desire for you to make a difference with an audience. And he's given you a spiritual gift so that when you identify your audience, you can use that gift effectively to serve those people and to serve Jesus Christ. While we continue being a benevolent project, your kind donations will continue to be vital in fulfilling the calling of TVS ministry. We do count on your gracious support and cooperation. For detailed information, please visit tvsseminary.com. So here is how I would suggest that you continue in your search for your spiritual gift, your audience, and your ministries. The first step is, what's your audience? That's first. Who do you want to serve? Is it a group of people? Is it a social institution? Then look at what your church has as their ministries. Where are those people likely to be? Or what ministry deals with the social issues that God's put on my heart? And then you go to those ministries and you just spend time there and you see, is this a place I could see myself serving? Do I feel comfortable here? Do I find like-minded people people who have the same desires I do, who have the same I, heart I do for this group. And if so, that's your ministry. If not, try something else. Explore. Don't ever accept a position that is a lifetime commitment. Sometimes someone volunteers to be the third grade Sunday school teacher and they start and they never get out of it. You're the third grade Sunday school teacher, and they may come to hate it. Well, guess what happens with the children in the class uh, where they have a teacher who hates what they're doing? Not too excited about coming to Sunday school. So we should create an environment in our churches where it encourages people to explore. And much like we go to the store and we try on some new clothes and see how does that look? Does that have the right feel? Is it the right color? It's the same thing here. Try on the ministries. See, is that a place? Try on the ministries associated with different audiences. And once you find the right place to serve, where your audience is likely to be, then start exploring your spiritual gifts the ones that you've identified as the most likely gifts. And again, just like clothes, try them on for size. See if they fit, if they're comfortable. If so, stay. If not, leave. Go to the ministry that's right at the bullseye of the target that I showed you in the last session. And it's likely that as you begin this process, you won't hit the bullseye. You'll either be completely off the target or you'll hit somewhere outside the bullseye. That's okay. But if you do, shoot another arrow. Get closer to the bullseye until finally you're at the place where I feel God through the years has led me. And this is the place he's caused me to serve. He has given me a heart for adult Christians. He has given me a passion for people to learn about spiritual gifts and their life purpose. And he's equipped me with the gift of teaching and knowledge. I did not find this place the first place time out. I have taught Sunday school. I told you I liked it. But I didn't like necessarily working with 
the different age groups, I got the most enjoyment out of adults. So that gave me some clues. Then they asked me to be involved with couples small group ministry. And I found I'm not a shepherd. I'm a teacher. And I feel uncomfortable picking up the phone and just saying, how are things going? A shepherd would have no problem. So I said, no, that's not for me. Then they asked me to be a part of men's ministry. And they actually, they asked me to start the men's ministry. And so along the way, I knew I enjoyed being in the company with, of other men and encouraging us to build relationships, which is much harder for men than it is for women. And I found, I don't have the gift of apostleship. Not only that, I don't have the gift of leadership. This isn't working. So I left that ministry. And then I was invited to join a ministry where they helped people learn about spiritual gifts. And as time went on, I recognized this is my place. This is where God wants me to be. And now God has given me the bullseye. It's taken many years. This is not just something you check off the list. It's a process. But when you find the bullseye, and when you use your gift to meet the needs of the audience in that bullseye, there is no greater feeling because you know you're exactly where God wants you to be. I know this is my purpose in life. I know that this is why I'm here on earth. And I would want you to be able to come to the point in your life where you would know you're at the bullseye. This is the reason you were made. This is why you are here on earth. And I will be praying that God will lead you to that point, both for the people in this class whom I've grown to love and I admire greatly, and for those of you who are watching by DVD who have challenges that none of us could even know about. I pray that God leads you to the purpose that's unique for your life. Well, thank you for joining us for this session. And we will be moving to the last session, the 50th session in this, where I will be giving a model of how the church might operate under the a spiritual gifts program. Please join us then. <music>